I love the Thundercats because everything they said was so exclamatory. Yeah. He's like, Lionel. Panthro was just like, they're, like <laughs> this tuna mill is fantastic. Dude, none of them were in the same room together. That's what it always <laughs> sounds like. Uh, Thundercats always sounds like they're having a conversation across Bruce Wayne's table in Batman. <laughs> where he's like, Panthro, are you enjoying the tuna sandwich? <laughs> Lionel, it's delicious. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Kite Club Podcast. I'm Jonathan Kite. With me, as always, is my best friend, Mr. Seth Shapiro. Hello, world. How are you? And uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was uh, Seth's Hall of Presidents. I'm just kind of checking in, you know? Yeah, a little it's chat GBT. A, it's important to check in every now yeah. and then. Yeah. How are we doing, America? Yeah. Or world? How are we doing? You, you good? Hey, 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 world. Uh, you good? You okay? With us in the booth is uh, Ben, Emmy, and uh, Paul Corey is back with us. Love uh, seeing Paul today. Um, guys, the first rule of Kite Club, you know, tell everybody about Kite Club. Second rule of Kite Club, tell everybody about Kite Club. Third rule, like and subscribe. Share. Sharing is caring. All that good stuff. Leave uh, reviews, please. It helps us out. If you like the show, you know, please let people know about us uh, that we're out there. We really appreciate everybody who um, supports the show. I'm going to be at the Hollywood Improv June 15th. And I'm going to be there uh, July 3rd, and I'm going to be at uh, the Tempe Improv, June 29 through July 2nd. Come out out and uh, celebrate America with your boy. Go to JonathanKiteComedy.com for all those dates and everything. Uh, Let me tell you something, brother. Tell me uh, something, brother. We, I performed with you out there at Tempe around that time late June. Let me tell you something. Late June is when you want to be in Tempe. Brother. Brother. I My body just had a Vietnam flashback. <laughs> And started sweating right now from it. Dude, I stepped off that plane and I just exploded in flame. We did Copper Blues Live, was it last year or two years ago? Two, uh, yeah, two or three years ago already. Walking yeah. to the club. Yeah. I was done. Oh, dude, I get sunburned waiting for my Uber. But yeah. I was like, I'll just, I'll tough it out uh -huh. and walk yeah. the hundred yards. <laughs> and it was, I was like an ice cube who was getting shorter. Yeah, like, I was five eleven when I did those shows. Like I asked the concierge at our hotel, like, do, do you guys have a? Uh, is there a fitness room here? They're like, no, no, but you're going to be walking a hundred yards places, so you'll be all right. Yeah, that's D all you're going to need. Arizona, a lot of the years is, is a sauna. Yeah, it's the driest sauna. Yeah. And I remember when the sun was setting, it didn't get cooler. Oh no no no! It just get, it just gets less boiling. Yeah, it's dark and warm. <laughs> yeah, See, Arizona, but, we're dark and warm. But I don't mind it, you know, because I'm I'm originally originally from Vegas. Yeah. So I like the hot and dry. I can handle it. You know what I mean? Because at least you can still do things like in the morning or at night. But we're, when we grew up in Chicago, if it's like negative thirty and snowing out, you can't get up at seven a.m. and go golfing. I mean, you could. My father like, does. Not, <laughs> my father. Has his own, he has multiple pairs of snowshoes. Uh -huh. My father is one of those people who's always ready to go get help. Yeah, your your father is definitely, um, like, clothing-wise, um, he's, like, prepared for any apocalyptic weather. My father would never have lost at Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy to see. Dysentery what, dies of him. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. He, he, he would, he's one of those guys who has everything for every season mm -hmm. he's like the he's like better dressed than ken he has everything for every season on any possible planet oh my goodness so he is ready for a venus summer he he has the thickest welding gear i have ever <laughs> seen and he would just wear it because once he once he puts it on he ain't taking that off yeah this isn't it. My father, you know what my father is not? A quick change guy. <laughs> no, but I imagine he doesn't really need it. I I imagine that your dad's skin is like you can't cut it with a knife at Brother, this point. When I was used to wash, you know how they, they say like when you wash your face, like modern, it's like, oh, just be gentle and, you know, let just splash the water over it. My dad would take cotton balls and uh -huh. dip them in witch hazel yeah. <laughs> and he would be trying to rub paint off a boat. A little, little bit of turpentine, splash a little yeah. turpentine he, on it. He took the primer off every time. Yeah. Your dad could sharpen a knife on his own skin. He, so that he, he's, he's his own whetstone. Have you ever <laughs> seen him just sharpen blades? Have I ever seen him sharpen blades? No. Is that something that's so common that I should have seen that by now? If you've ever been to our house <laughs> or if he's ever come to your house, uh -huh. he shows up. You know, they say don't ever show up empty handed. He shows up with a sharpening stone. 
<laughs> I have seen him go to somebody's house and just open up a drawer. Yeah. They're like, where's your dad? And all you hear is, shoo, 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 and he comes out with a knife and he goes, here's the problem. That's how he introduces himself. Yeah, that's his Peter and the Wolf uh, musical <laughs> noise. It's just a, a knife being sharpened. Yeah. It's crazy because he just sort of go. he goes into a house like a, like a like a like the elves and the shoemakers. Uh-huh. He just goes in your house and starts building things. And he's the opposite of a gremlin. Right. Yeah. And so I will not see him like when he goes to my brother's house, if I don't see him, I just literally hear him uh, just fixing things up. Where's dad? Oh, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's the worst at hide and seek. He always gives himself away. Well, if he he would help he built us a tree house. Did I ever show you the pictures? No, that's super cool. It How was, old were you? Um, 38. No, I was, <laughs> he built us a treehouse. I want to say when I was like six or seven years old uh-huh. and it was a pretty tall tree. He, and it had a, a he chain. built a tree. He grew it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's the Johnny Appleseed. He goes, <laughs> I planted this when we were just a colony and, um, <laughs> Illinois was never a colony, but, um, trolls, um, <laughs> that he built this up and he, he, it was pretty amazing. And it had a, it had a, a chain ladder mm-hmm. And it was amazing because fully functioning elevator. Oh, you, that, that there, my father does not use electricity. <laughs> yeah, um, it, yeah it was, oh, I never said it was electric. He hired someone to pulley it up. Yeah, right. It was a dumb waiter. Yeah, dumb waiter. So um, yeah, we just had a giant troll in our yard. If people have garden gnomes. We had a troll going up, going down, menswear j- tips. <laughs> um, the soul of an elf. Sorry. So he. So go back to what he had put in the. Uh, so he yeah, built yeah. this thing that was so. It was amazing, and it was really cool to look at. That I just remember people driving up and taking photos of it, mm-hmm. and it was one of those cool things where I always felt that someone was going to try to sneak into the property, and like they would fall because if someone gets hurt on your property, you're liable. Yeah, yeah. And so the, we had to tear it down though because the tree rotted. Oh man, that was a sad day, dude. But that house is still standing. Now it's just a house. Now you guys rent it out. Our house it's was a, a tree house. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and that's how we got our house. Yeah, and now you know the rest of the story. And now you know. All That's pretty cool. Life. I wish I had skills like that. My my grandfather, uh, my mom's dad, was an amazing builder. Built a lot. He was a, he was a genius with his hands. Built a yeah. ton of stuff. Um, and every year, like we built uh, our sukkah, and he would, you know, as a little kid, he would bring me out. That's how and, much of a not builder you are. Yeah, that you just say builder, not a carpenter. Well, not- but no, but he was, but he wasn't just a carpenter. He was a builder. He would he he created. A lot of things, you know what I mean. Like he he did a lot of wood carving. He created an amazing set of blocks for me when I was like three or four. Um, Dad does that for the for, yeah, for Lauren's so, kids, my brother's kids. So he did. So he he was he was a creator of all sorts of things like that. Um, and I just it didn't translate to me. Like I have. I have the skills of someone who has good mental common sense and can apply that to an Ikea. Yeah. Right. And since being a dad. I built Ikea furniture with you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so since being a dad, I've had a, a thousand of those kinds of projects of things that my wife is like, oh, by the way, I ordered him a blank. And now here's half your Saturday that you're going to have to work on this. Thing. Yeah. And so I feel confident at that. But but certainly like I like I'm an expert layman. You know, but yeah. that's it. Well, that's now it. everything is available online. I remember the Bob Vila videos were coming out when we were kids, mm-hmm. and it was so infuriating how easy <laughs> he made it seem, and he sort of never yeah. lost eye contact with the camera. Right, he he's not even doing, looking at what he's doing, dude. And it's like, <laughs> and I remember being there with my father because he built our he built the deck at mm-hmm. our house. He oh, built cool. so, I mean, it was unbelievable. He redid the bathrooms, mm-hmm. he did the kitchens. I mean, the, he my dad was essentially Bob Vila without the VHS deal. And he would swear a lot more. Uh-huh. I remember my yeah, dad without just the be- warmth. Yeah, yeah for oh sure. My, <laughs> my dad was sitting there and he go and, he, and I was like and I go, oh what happened? He goes, what the <laughs> like just this <laughs> me just sitting there handing him tools like a nurse at, a, at an operating table. Dude, that that's me. Like I don't consider I don't consider myself that angry of a person, but man does my anger come out when I'm trying to put something together. Oh I am in full on everything makes me angry. Like, oh, where's that fucking nut? Oh, okay, there it is. Stupid yeah. thing. Why was it two inches away from where I thought it was? Yeah. I just, I'm mad at the world when I'm building stuff. I feel like there's a troll that works at Ikea that just throws in an extra Allen yeah. wrench or like an extra uh, screw or a nut or a bolt. <laughs> yeah, just to mess you're going, with me. Wait a minute. Yeah, to just, make me think yeah, I, just, yeah. Uh, now that's a gremlin. <laughs> the Ikea gremlins. Yeah. This is our Father's mm. Day episode. This is, this will be your third 
Father's Day. Third Father's Day, because my first one, my kid was like three months old, right. and now he's two years and three months. Amazing. Amazing. Happy Father's Day. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, appreciate it. What do you uh, guys do for Father's Day? Um, By the way, Father's Day, we can admit, mm-hmm. is like, it, it's the uh, the redheaded stepchild to Mother's Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I mean the, the father... That is, it's such a ridiculous holiday in this country mm-hmm. that it's like Mother's Day is, it's, it's, it's like second Christmas. For sure. We're, you're celebrating better Jesus. So let's Oh, where did it. Jesus come from? <laughs> a mother. Right. Yeah, so. She did, she did all oh, the the work. mother of all Jesuses? Yeah. She really made the main sacrifice. Yeah. Her body. Yeah. Mother's Day is called <laughs> Super Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But it's like Super Christmas, yeah. Mom. Well, let's face it, though. With the he cr- came out of her box. <laughs> now, that's an unboxing video I'd like to watch. Um, no, but that's. Uh, when she when he came out, it was like stockings hanging. <laughs> Got to roll those back up. That's why we eat roast beef on Mother's Day. Oh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so. But Father's Day, come on! This is a shit holiday, bro. Yeah, it's fine. I um, I'm I am fine with it not being uh, a big deal. Your wife has a like, gun over there. Like my it, like my family would love to make it a bigger deal for me than I like. I honestly, I don't care. Not in a nihilistic way, but like, it really, it's okay with me. You know, my wife yesterday was like throwing out a bunch of ideas. She's like, we could do this or this. I'm like, yeah, it all sounds good to me. It all it all it really it all sounds fine. Just pick a thing and let's go. You know. But what the, the Father's Day traditions are. Fucking garbage. They're like, get him a tie that he won't wear. Yeah. Or, you know. Boxers and other cologne. I mean, we got my dad boxers one time, and that was the only, because I was thinking about the gifts. I actually uh, just got off the phone with my dad, and I was talking just about Father's Day and everything. That's why you look so tired. Bro, I'm exhausted. Dude, we built a, (laughs) uh, he had me stay on the phone when we built a deck. I go, Dad, I'm not helping. He goes, yeah, hand me another wrench. Dad, I'm just. All right, let me book a flight. Yeah. No, I sent it to him. I I, uh, I Amazoned it to him. Smart. Let me know when it gets there when the drone arrives. <laughs> but that's the thing is we didn't do anything. And my mother, the nicest thing was we, Lauren and I would come home and we would plant the garden mm-hmm. with her. That would be like our Mother's Day tradition. But it's such a big thing where we really, obviously, we do celebrate mothers, but the the father is such an afterthought, the mm-hmm. Father's Day thing. There's no brunch. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing. Well, I, I think in general, women like celebrating, like, like it is definitely a more female thing to like have a birthday week. More or a month. A, or a month. Than or a year. Or a year, yeah. yeah. It's like, all right, guys, next year's birthday year starts next yep. week. Yep. Um, and, so and guys, the day after you have and, a birthday. And guys aren't as much like that, I think. And so, But let's face it, with the track record that, that dads have in general in this country, you know, they are they are more like the, uh, the second thought of parents, really. I'm going to bring up something for it real quick. Uh, the spending habits compared to Mother's Day in America right now, uh-huh. so $13 billion is spent by consumers, um, and that I mean, moms are one hundred and sixty three dollars compared to dads being one hundred and sixteen. That's an average spent on gifts for a dad, uh-huh. and so that's not that much difference, if I'm being honest. Right, but, but you you know why? Because you got, you get your dad tools. Yeah, that's right. the thing. I so, got my father tools mm-hmm. that he knew he wanted. It was like the it's like a worse Christmas. But I wonder if that also incorporates. He always, he knows what he's getting. But I will also I wonder if that also incorporates like. Um, you know, things like like doing dinner or doing activities and things like that and the prices for that. Or if it's just for gifts. I never did. Did you ever do a brunch with your dad for Father's Day? Um, No. I'll Our Father's sh- Day gift was I leaving mean, him alone. I mean, usually, I mean, usually my dad, I mean, you know, you, I mean, my dad lives in Vegas, so I would have to be there for Father's Day, which sometimes we are actually because we tend to go out there for our anniversary, which is coming up in a couple weeks, too. Um, So if we're there, we'll take him out for dinner. Yeah, we'll take him out for dinner. But like as far as stuff, he's okay without a gift. I'm okay with like to my to my wife uh and my mother out there, by the way, who are like wondering what I want for Father's Day or anyone else. I'm I'm cool. I don't need I need less stuff. I need someone to come into our house and take three quarters of our stuff. So yeah. can you hire a burglar? Can you that's hire, what I want for what, Father's Day. Can we get wa- a burglar, please? What he wants for Father's Day are repo men. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. I mean, no, you're right. It's come it's, on in. Fire sale. That's what I want. It's a fire sale in our house. My father is the most organized hoarder <laughs> I've ever met because what I get for him is so he collects he collects a few things, right? He collects old time radios, uh-huh. stereo cameras, uh-huh. um, lanterns, Coleman lanterns, turn of the century, 18 to 1900s, mm-hmm. uh, and he collects Pez. 
Dude, my my uncle is a Pez collector yeah. as well. My uncle Gordy, my mom's brother. Yeah. So he got it because he was cool. he was dumpster diving one time and mm-hmm. he found this. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. Cost plus world market. By the way, I'm telling you right now, this is this is a Kite Club podcast secret. Uh-huh. Go to the dumpsters. That stuff is still good. They just throw out the packages because it's seasonal. Uh. Uh-uh, that stuff is still still great. great. <laughs> um, I just got the shirt. Um, <laughs> snake season is over. Not for this guy, but. I um I he said he found a uh a, a, a there's a white head duck with a red bill and a blue body mm-hmm. and he's and he found one so he's like I'll take it home and he googled it and it was worth a lot of money and so at that point he just was like I think I'm gonna start collecting Pez this is my job now <laughs> so he, I quit brother he is he is on a reality show the Great Pez Hunt. Dude, aren't are our dads like not the same guy? Because you know that Bob Shapiro love Bob Shapiro is uh, he is also a collector. Not luckily, his wife has made him not be a hoarder as much as he used to be. But certainly, when my dad my dad's thing is he loves. Um, I think he gets excited by a good deal. You know, he gets excited by free things, swag. You know, you've heard we have some amazing stories we could tell some other time. Yeah. But but certainly my dad is not hurting. He is not wanting for keychains or promotional pens or promotional mini frisbees. The only shirts I've ever seen him wear are free stuff that he got at an event. Um, like t-shirts or, or like casinos, you know, yeah, that, and, which that, is why Vegas is like the perfect town for him because casinos always have such great giveaways of gifts that definitely, definitely dad's place has a lot of, of casino promo stuff for sure. Well, my, my parents' house looks like a very, um, distant wing of the Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. It's just, his, his stuff is well displayed <laughs> yeah. and it's old and it's in great condition and yeah. he's a tinkerer, you know? Uh-huh. And he is a builder. Yeah, like it would be like a um, like a uh, an exhibit of of like late twentieth century pop culture. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And he has he has old Sears Roebuck catalogs. Amazing. He goes, look what I found. Yeah, he just has them. So my dad was here a couple of weeks ago, and we had someone over who was um, like doing like a tutoring session yeah. with our with our two year old, and my dad was there, and he was wearing a jacket from the Palms Casino. And and I told her that, you know, he lives in Vegas. And so when she saw that, she asked me, she's like, oh, does he work for the Palms? And I'm like, oh, no. But hold on. Oh, we no, no, went no. to go see Ka. If you haven't seen it, it's amazing. <laughs> it's an amazing uh, Cirque du Soleil show. And, and Bob Shapiro, the best, Seth's dad, he knew one of the guys in it from a, a yoga class that they were in together. What was uh, a movement class? He, no, it might have been like a folk dance class or an Argentine tango class. Well, that's class the thing. His something. father is an incredible. He's like Jackie Gleason. He's mm-hmm. a little bit of a bigger guy, but he's so light on his toes. And yeah. at your wedding, mm-hmm. he was the best dancer oh, at the wedding. He crushed it, man. I mean, this he's really impressive. I mean, this is not some like guy in the corner where everyone's like, "Oh, that's cute." He's killing it. He put us all to shame. Yeah. It so he great. we go to Ka. Bob <laughs> happens to be wearing the shirt of the employees. And pants. And pants. A bright red shirt and black pants. At the casino. It's the mm-hmm. same shade. And so we're going, we we go backstage because we know one of the performers, he knows one of the performers and we're by association, and they, people keep asking him informational stuff. Yeah. They're uh, like, oh, wh- hey, where's the lobby? Hey, where do we go to get a drink? Or yeah, And your we- father didn't say, I don't work here. Yeah. He was showing them where to go. Yeah. Hey, can you help us to our seat? He goes, guys, I'll be right back. Where do you get that flashlight? <laughs> <laughs> he takes out the understudy bill. He goes, just so you know, the the part of, of Monkey King number one movie we by uh, Charles Danovan tonight. I'm like, where did he get that? Oh, no, they're going to say, he's like by Bob Shapiro. Yeah. I bought in five He's minutes. like, give me one second. He goes, no, no. He goes, what's your name, sir? I didn't get Charles Danovan. <laughs> But that was crazy. That's I, my Cirque name, dude. It was it was so funny that because your your father is so helpful and so sweet. Yeah, and he would never he would be like, let's find out. And I just remember him like wandering off from the group, and you being like, Dad, we gotta go. We're following this guy. Don't help the patrons. Yeah, he didn't he didn't realize they were asking him because of what he was wearing. He didn't even realize. He's it. like, wow, I guess I just must be giving off like a, a helpful vibe tonight. He, but she always does. But yeah. to be dressed like an usher. At yeah. that Cirque show on that day, that yeah. was pretty crazy. Amazing. I mean, it, it's pretty nuts because, um, <laughs> anyway, well, yeah. happy Father's Day to Yeah, you. thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah. happy Father's Day to uh, your dad. And yeah. and maybe to you. Who knows? Yeah, if, call in. Or please don't. Please I don't. mean, are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, what's going on in the news? We got, um, my oh, th- so this is what I wanted to tell you. So yeah. my father, w- he goes, did you hear about, so I call him up, I haven't talked to him in a while. And he goes, did you hear about over 100 children illegally employed by the U- a U.S. slaughterhouse mm-hmm. in Missouri? 
And I go, no, I didn't hear about it. And he said, um, th- yeah, that that's th- there's a there's a, a sweat shop, a meat sweats shop, meat sweats, where they had chainmail gloves on because they were holding the meat and chopping it up with uh, with cleavers. Yeah, it's not just Missouri, dude. It's like seven Arkansas, Colorado, Indiana, Kansas, Minnesota, Nebraska, Tennessee, and Texas as well. And they were hired in Wisconsin. Fantastic. Yeah. Those are, we're e- killing it. Every, America. Every state where you can't get an abortion, <laughs> you can get one of these. Well, that's these, why. These kids they need were the all supposed to be aborted. Yeah, they need the workers. Yeah. Yeah. We can't do that. They, uh, But it, it's pretty nuts to it, that, that. that's the news that my father shares with me. Mm-hmm. You hear about these sweat, these meat sweat. Have, have you ever been to a slaughterhouse? No. Have you? I haven't, but I have seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. I don't want to because I know that it is going to like, deter you. It's going to turn me vegan. So I'm sure maybe that's what we're doing for uh, Father's Day. For I was Father's going to say, Day. your your wife and your mom are taking yeah. you to a slaughterhouse. Yeah. They're both vegan, by the Spoiler way. Spoiler alert. Like yeah. Um, I uh, <laughs> also, uh, uh, there was children found after 40 days in the Amazon. Survived by eating cassava flour. Yeah, incredible. It is incredible. After a plane crash. They were in a plane crash. They were the only survivors. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Because you know what they they didn't do? Hmm. Uh, They didn't kill each other. Yeah. Like every story, Yellow Jackets on Showtime or- I haven't seen it yet. Don't spoil. That's okay. That's on me. There's a plane crash. There's a plane crash. And uh, they survive on uh, cassava flour. No. Yeah. On, On children. Yeah. It's or uh, Lord of the Flies. Yeah, I definitely would be like after five days of just cassava flour, I'd probably be looking at looking at my fellow survivors and wondering which one is the tastiest. Yeah, I mean the Donner Party. Yeah, yeah, delicious. Yeah, um, I saw Transformers this weekend. Oh, talk to me, man. So Pete Davidson mm-hmm. was awesome. He killed it. That's he was great. Really, not, I mean, not the, it's not surprising, but. It was he was great. He was um, a, a really big part of the movie. Here's the thing: obviously, they're never going to stop making these movies, mm-hmm. and that's cool. But it's always a little weird when there's not a lot of humans in it, because you'd think that more people would be aware of giant robots. Like that's why that's why when we saw Black Adam, right, mm-hmm. and they're in Cairo fighting, mm-hmm. and there's like three citizens at the end, like oh, fighting yeah. a million zombies. <laughs> it looks like a community theater production. Of superhero dramas. Where each person represents a thousand. Yeah. Right. And then it's like, or it's guys like, oh, and then he like is, takes a wig and comes back and he's like, <laughs> oh, my baby. I mean. It, like me in college. Yeah. Yeah. I would always play the guy. I, in plays in college, I would play like five different characters and they would all get killed. So I would have to keep changing what I had. But right. Yeah, but it's like, it, or it's like, it, it's, it's, um, it's like the, uh, it's like a streetcar named Desire. Uh-huh. Where they, where the, the university just does not have enough people to play that town, <laughs> right. and so it's like they all have sort of like there's like a, a, a sticks with heads on them, yeah. you know, on the side, and they're all sort of moving in, in tandem. Yeah. That's like what it the looked Jackson like. Five. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. that's what it looked like. Whereas like where the um, Anthony Ramos and I, I'm so sorry, I can't remember the woman's name, mm-hmm. uh, but sh- they were awesome. I mean, really enjoyable but the fact that there were only two humans and that the government wasn't involved in all at mm-hmm. all with you know clearly there's got to be some sort of footage or there's no one who's who's seeing it oh yeah uh dominique fishback yeah fishback? she is awesome mm-hmm. and they're they're very they're just great but it's amazing to me that that no one else gets involved that humans with all this stuff and by the way it takes place in the 90s mm-hmm. where it's like I feel like people would have been interested in this. Well, it's, what I heard is that it takes place in the 90s, but really only in name that like you wouldn't know that they didn't really service that idea that much. Well, what they one, the one line that was weird is one of them said 9-11 will never happen. And I was like, <laughs> what <laughs> did you mean by that? Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it takes place. Well, in 94, there's but it, it goes out of its way, though, to like talk about cassette tapes and. Some of these other things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, there's like, oh, like the, the, uh, the, uh, the background noise is like, so what do you think of Clinton? Do you think that actually went in, you know? And it's, but it, it wasn't super obvious that way. Like nobody really had a bag phone uh-huh. or a brick phone, yeah, brick you know, phone, yeah. or no one was wearing, um, cross colors uh-huh. or a Looney Tunes version of cross colors. Or the zebra pants. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but with the fanny pack. But it was, I thought it was great, but I did think it was a little weird that there just weren't more people. Mm-hmm. They, there were more robots than people. They really are taking our jobs. Well, and the fact that it was such a spectacle, and this is supposed to be a prequel to 
the Shia LaBeouf ones, the, the original ones that came out like 15 years ago already or, or more that took place then yeah. in, in the mid 2000s. 2007, I and think. And so it's like, where was the, like when this happened to Shia LaBeouf, his reaction should have been, if this is all in the same timeline, oh, oh yeah, I'm, like that thing that happened in the mid 90s that I news. read about in the news. Yeah. yeah. Think about like Roswell, which not a yeah. lot of people saw, yeah. but people heard about. Mm-hmm. Everyone still can't shut up about it. Right. So these giant robot car trucks. It would have made news. That's what I mean. It would have probably been like within the first three pages of the of the newspaper. It would have been the entire newspaper. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. No, I know. Yeah. It's like but yeah. or it would have been every news story and like people just aren't covering it, which yeah. was so funny. Hey, did you hey, can you imagine that crazy space robots thing? No, I missed it. Wait, what happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Shia LaBeouf would have had to have been a heck of a lot. Uh, younger, I'm, uh, that he was like, oh, I wasn't alive for that. Right, like how people are for like now for 9-11. Dude, you know, I've made a decision. I know I'm about to get like hate from a certain demographic and turn them off, but here's, here's my old man Bro, rant. I'm if, already on board. If you, I know you're doing. If you don't have a memory about 9-11, it's, it's hard for me to take you seriously about anything. But also, you know how people, Sorry. I feel like there's something going on right now, and I know, again, we're old man in the sea. Mm-hmm. I know that's ageist. Yeah, but, but people go, oh, I, that happened before I was born. Yeah. And you're like, the Sorry. internet. Yeah, the internet allows that to never. Right. There's no way to that statement. Everything and, is recorded now. Every Like, people who are, kids who are alive now, their entire lives are documented online. Yeah. But also everything. history. And everything is so history. easy. When somebody references something, they're like, oh, I don't get that. I, I, yeah. I, I'm too old, for, or I'm, I'm, I'm not old for that. I'm Dude, like, can I tell you something? It's 2008. I got you a, son of a bitch. I don't remember if I told you this, but this infuriated me. But I was somewhere where they were showing, uh, where they were showing Teen Wolf, the original, one of your absolute favorites. If you haven't seen Teen Wolf, <laughs> it's the greatest film ever made. I mean, it's terrible, but it's great. It's terrible. You know, in, I, an, in an 80s movie. I don't way. think it's terrible. I just think watch it again. The movie doesn't make any sense, yeah. and I love it. Right, of course, it's one of those that we love. But anyway, yeah, love it. Not going to hate on it. No, it's the I best. Love Teen Wolf. Yeah. And um, anyway, this guy probably like mid mid twenties. Yeah, and he sees this and he goes, "What is that?" I go, "It's Teen." I go, "Dude, it's Teen Wolf." Michael J. Fox, Teen Wolf. And he goes, "Oh, he goes. Did they make a movie based on the TV show?" Because of the recent TV show that was just on what MTV or something it was. like that, yeah. And they go, did they? Now they, I think they actually did make a movie based on that recently. But he, I go, no, dude, that TV show was based on an old m- m- movie from the eighties. He's like, what? This was mind blowing to him. And we well, watched this for five minutes, and all he was doing, of course, was shitting on it. Like this is terrible. But that's the problem. Yeah. That's the stupidity that they can't believe that the things that they like yeah. are based on something else. Yeah. That they're like, no, everything today must be. An or- By the way, nothing today is original. Everything before them was ancient history. But also that that they can't believe it exists. It's like this thing, Transformers, yeah. that you guys like. Yeah. That's as old as Teen Wolf. It we're, came out in 84, I think. We're becoming such old people. But like, I do think there's a difference because when we remember were- COVID. Because <laughs> when we were kids, I think that maybe it's just because of how we were raised, who our parents were. But I definitely got a good dose of pop culture from the seventies, the sixties, the fifties, because that was like my or parents' you did your heyday own independent of music. Research, but but also I was exposed to that as a kid, like that, you know, like so much music, like you know, right. I mean, that's my parents' favorite. Everything is from from those eras, and so I got that. Like I'll have to say, there was one thing that that made me happy and hopeful for the future is I went to my cousin's daughter. Daughter's bat mitzvah like last November. First bar bat mitzvah I've been to in like 20, you know, 25 years or yeah. something, right? And they played a lot of great music from the 80s and the 90s right. at the bat mitzvah. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, it's cool. Like these kids, and they were like singing and dancing along. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. You know what? Maybe it's because their parents are now our age and because we love so much pop culture from our childhood that we're doing what our parents did. But I also talk about this. So it's the Gen X's kids. It's the bit that I talk about. I I do think that stuff from the eighties, it was the first time that things were so well branded. They Mm -hmm. just keep making stuff. Yeah. Right. The fact that they're making teenage mutant Ninja Turtles again, or Ghostbusters or Transformers, they keep making things from that era because the worlds were so rich. GI Joe, all this stuff. Yes, but also marketing wise, it's it's like a near slam dunk home run. Yeah, it, it's like a guarantee because you have people our age, and now the uh, the kids of our age are the are the age for it. Totally agree. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's pretty smart. 
pretty smart. What's what's missing? What what needs to have a remake that hasn't been yet? Like, what's a really great thing? Voltron. Yeah, but do you, but Voltron was never as popular as uh, you know Transformers or Get Out. Yeah, I'll show myself out. No, it wasn't. It wasn't as popular as that. Or He Man. I mean, the answer is He Man. Right, He Man. But they're doing that, right? Aren't they? I, doing they always He-Man? say that they're going to do that. Yeah. I love that. I love He Man so much mm-hmm. that they tried to do a, a a Netflix cartoon about it. It was it was fine. It was fine. Thundercats would be a good one. They tried to do that a they remake did, of that. Yeah, not the movie, but they did a, a TV a, show remake. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I never caught it. But it doesn't look the same. That's the thing. Is like I want that old Japanimation 80s look. Yeah, of course. But it wasn't. It was, you know, brand new computer. Who I know, Lord of the Thundercats. Snurf. Everything was, I love that, I love the Thundercats because everything they said was so exclamatory. Yeah. It's like, Lionel. Panthro was just like, they're, like <laughs> this tuna mill is fantastic. Dude, none of them were in the same room together. That's what it always <laughs> sounds like. Uh, Thundercats <laughs> always sounds like they're having a conversation across Bruce Wayne's table in Batman <laughs> where he's like, Panthro. Are you enjoying the tuna sandwich? <laughs> Lionel, it's delicious. You know what was great and about you said, what was great snurf, about snurf. What was great Lionel. about uh, about um Panthro is he was the black one. Oh. And they made him a different color. Yeah. They're like, you're you're gonna be blue. The black the black people of the Thundercats universe are blue. And also he he talked, he had a little bit of a street slang to him. Right. He's like, Lionel, what are you <laughs> talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? Why would you do that? Because it was <laughs> Lino the 80s. today, bro. Lino today, or uh, yeah, um, uh, Panthro today is like for shizzle. It's like Panthro. No one says that anymore. <laughs> right. It's a little awkward because in their universe, it's Blue Lives Matter. So it's the exact opposite. Anyway, uh, yeah, they all have taxo. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Uh, taxoplasmosis. <laughs> I think the humans are going blind from our cat shit. I've got feline sickle cell. I have, yeah. Nerf, I think I have HIV. Oh, wait a minute. It's feline and schnurfs. <laughs> I have full-blown schnurfs. <laughs> yeah. That was his version of Smurf. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, they did a special episode. Every 80s show had a special AIDS episode. I love to get tongued in the schnurf. <laughs> Uh, snarf, are you cleaning your snarf? <laughs> I got it off a toilet, snarf. Snarf. Somebody needs to change my kitty litter. It's full of shit, snarf. <laughs> the, like you, but you, you said the you shit. said the word. And then yeah, Chitara and Kit and Cat mm. or Mumra, dude. Mumra. Yeah, I am the living. I mean, that guy was awesome. But do you remember? He was a scary dude. It was, and then. Dude, he was one where you're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm, yeah. Don't fuck with this guy. He was a scary bad guy for sure. And, but that show was so rich with characters. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, they need to bring that back. Yeah. Okay, here's let's. what would be untouchable? What should they absolutely not do a movie or TV remake of? Back now? to the Future. Yeah, for sure. I think that we can all agree that that one is going to be that, you know, Rick yeah. and Morty, it does its own thing. It's right. enough. That's not really. No, but it's enough. It's that's an homage to that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. So you could yeah. do an homage or something. Yeah, um, don't don't touch. Don't touch my back to the future. Yeah. Pro- it would be amazing if they did a Princess Bride remake, like with the original cast. I mean, that'd be impossible. Well, no, but I'm saying that's why it'd be amazing. Considering because they'd have to bring Andre the Giant back to life. They do with AI. Right. Anybody want to pee? Anybody want to pee? Anybody? We need to find a way to uh, to you know, shoehorn in do you Princess know, Bride every week. Do you know that Andre the Giant was original? He was in the original Fast and Furious. Seriously? I did it for, oh. <laughs> I did it for family. <laughs> With him in it, cars can't go fast or furious. Yeah. Uh, 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 I did it for family. <laughs> Um. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, for, or Princess Bride. But only if it was only if, maybe if only if it was written and directed again by Rob Reiner. But it could. I right. mean, they they we talked about that before. They're doing a they're doing a, a, maybe a Broadway musical about it. Oh, cool. They're doing a Back to the Future musical. Oh, that's, that's been around for a while. That's but um, but that's what I mean. They that's the way around it. They sort of do because mm-hmm. I would say Wizard of Oz. I mean, obviously it's forever ago, and then they did Wicked. They, right. like, I feel like the musical is always like a fun way to bring in a new... Yeah, Wizard of Oz would be interesting if... Uh, they've done it a million... They, well, I, they've done it, but, but they've done like like musical productions of it, but they haven't done like an actual remake of the film film, like full on. No. You know what I mean? Which could be interesting. But in terms of cartoons, 
I mean, in terms of stuff that's untouchable, I, you know what I don't want to see, hmm. or maybe I do, those Care Bear movies where Ugh. the kids were on hard drugs. I don't want to watch the original. Oh, <laughs> dude, the Care Bear stare, that felt a little creepy. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, yeah. This, this guy's not wearing any pants. Even even when I was like... What's that on his chest? <laughs> even when I was... It's a wet spot. <laughs> Even when I was young enough to that for to be of the demographic for Care Bears, I was still not into it. I liked. I was them, like, this is too baby for me. The I'm movies, four. I still watch them. No, the uh, the movies are a little weird because mm-hmm. there is a kid who is on hardcore drugs mm-hmm. and he's getting dealt drugs, mm-hmm. and they're trying to save him from becoming an addict. Wait, for real? Yes, it's a drug movie. I yes. mean, it's a movie about it's just an intervention. Yeah, no, they're no, they're gummies. <laughs> Talking about he's he, that's how he gets he goes eat me out all right <laughs> come on come on dude we'll cut that out yeah we won't and uh, but uh, what else yeah there's got to be sacred because they tried to do a um, uh, a Pikachu Detective Pikachu movie the Pokemon movie yeah it got overall good review I didn't see it I didn't see it either it. but it was the kid who was also in the Dungeons and Dragons that you recently saw awesome that dude. he's gr- yeah very good Justice v- Smith it was he, it was fun great actor. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's tough because you're always going to have people that are going to be like, this isn't, it doesn't remind me of my childhood, so I hate it. Mm-hmm. And then new people. The reason I like doing it is I like for people to discover this stuff. I love sure. He-Man. I love um, Voltron. Mm-hmm. I mean, Voltron was essentially um, a Japanese. I mean, it's what they did with Power Rangers. Remember they tried to do a new Power Rangers? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, recently. Yeah. Brian Cranston was in it. Um. Yeah, and then whoever played the voice of the robot was like some young famous person. It wasn't Pete Davidson. I'll look it up. But uh, yeah, that. But it didn't do well at all. It got terrible reviews. I didn't see it. Imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's. I don't know. It's. It's a. Speaking of, you know, so what was released today in 1982 was E.T. Oh, really? Or this this week was that your first movie? First movie I ever saw in the theaters, mm-hmm. and my mother and father took me. My brother was too young. Um. My, they took me to go see it, and when E.T. is getting captured by the government, mm-hmm. and he's on the operating table, and you know he looks like a, a dried out cat turd. Yeah, that he, I get, up, I get up, and I start screaming at the top of my lungs because I love that alien so much, and uh-huh. I was like, "What's happening to him?" And my, and this is the '80s. I mean, these theaters were packed. It was either that or read a book <laughs> in the '80s, right? These are the only two options. And and the room, I mean, it was just packed. And so my mom had to shush me and pull me down. Uh-huh. And she's like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. You would have been three. That's pretty scary for a three-year-old. Yeah. Man. I mean, even E.T., if you don't find him beloved and cute, you could I could see a three-year-old being scared of E.T. But he was, yeah, well, he did look like a ball sack. Mm-hmm. I wonder if somebody was, well, that's, we talk about that with little. Alf all the time, about how Alf, if you put a pair of sunglasses on your dick, it's Alf. It's Alf. Yeah, it's Alf blowing the saxophone in the opening credits. And all he's looking, looking for up. is cats. Mostly. Um, were you nodding? You were. Oh, it was Bill Hader who did the voice of the the robot. In, oh yeah. no way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love in Bill the, Hader. So, but what was your first movie? Do you remember? No, I don't, man. And I asked my parents, and they don't remember. They were on so many drugs in the eighties. Yeah. Kidding. Very, very much kidding. I what I the, what I love is the uh, is that the the, just the audio version of just the podcast. The yeah, yeah. We have to, <laughs> there are going to be a lot of knowing looks to the camera that aren't going to translate. Yeah, it's like you really have to listen to this and then watch it on YouTube to get the full effect. The the thing about, we, we would we would go see movies all the time when I was growing up mm-hmm. because uh, we had this Skokie theater and my grandmother used to take us all the time. Mm-hmm. So I saw Hook in the theater. I saw Roger Rabbit. It was, sure. it was awesome. I hope they don't make remake Roger Rabbit. No, no, that would... Yeah, stay definitely stay away from that one. Do you know who's supposed to play Eddie Valant, but he turned it down in the original? Mm-hmm. Who? Eddie Murphy. Really? He said it was the only s- film that he'd ever regretted turning down because mm-hmm. a guy like I mean, one of the greatest who ever did it, Eddie Murphy, was offered everything, and he turned. You know, he he. Wow. You know, even his like bad movies are still pretty fucking great. He's so talented. I mean, it's like right. Guy, he's always enjoyable watching, even in bad movies. Right. Yeah. And so, um, but man, but Bob Hoskins is so perfect for that part. Here's why it would have been a little weird because it was it, the 1920s in San Francisco, mm-hmm. and you know, yeah. And the thing is, the, the the cartoons, people were racist against the cartoons. Remember, they didn't want they they kept them in a separate area. Yeah, because they were colored. 
That's where I was going with it. And uh, so, sorry, buddy. No, 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 Did no. I step on it? No, no, we'll cut that. Let's go. So they were racist against the cartoons mm-hmm. because they were colored. No, no, I'm just kidding. We'll keep yours. So, <laughs> but the um, but it's true. Well, right, so, they were a separate class. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. so I think that that would have been a little confusing for them. I mean, obviously, it would have been amazing to see Eddie Murphy do anything. Mm-hmm. But I think that that would have maybe. It wouldn't, I don't know that the, the message of it was where it's like, you know, people just were treating everybody that didn't look like them badly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and talk about scary. At the end of that, when Judge Doom comes out. Oh, super creepy, man. I mean, yeah, holy hell. Scary. So do you know, you know what? I'm going to save this for a future one so I can get all my ducks in a row to talk about this. But that you voted is, for Trump? <laughs> but there is, a, I mean. The episode's done. Just three out. times. There is an amazing uh there is this amazing, uh, I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory, but more just like a a, a, a life fan theory that's also about movies about uh, Christopher Lloyd, that he's actually a gray alien. A grayalien? A grayalien. <laughs> if you know, you know. Well, that's his Armenian name originally. Grayalien? Yeah. His no, no, name is Armin a, a grayalien. That's the color of his Mercedes. <laughs> it's grayalien. Grayalien Mercedes. Please, my, my friend, friend, please, my friend. Um, he, but there are please, my several movies throughout his career, including obviously the Back to the Futures, that, um, that hint at the fact that he's like a super intelligent, um, extra dimensional being. Um, and, and that's one of those, those movies because... I'm going to get all my ducks in a row. We're going to talk about it because it's really crazy interesting. Yeah, let's I'm talk not, about it. I'm not saying I believe it. <laughs> okay. Well, it, there it is again. Your mom's like, why does the, why does the podcast keep stopping? <laughs> yeah, why are there random pauses on here? So, um, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to really talk fun. about it. We're going to talk about it. Do you, yeah. um, do you have any Oive of the day? Um, I, I've had a, a couple of awkward restaurant situations lately. Um, and I know maybe you do too. Or well, go go with your oive, and maybe I'll piggyback off. My oive of the day is so both Seth and I were servers for a long time, many, many, many years, and we rely on tips. And I think both of us are pretty good tippers. Mm-hmm. And I think that I am lucky enough to have worked in places that that they were they were full all the time, and I really appreciate people's tips. Literally got me to this point. You know, they were funding our career before we started acting and doing comedy while we were trying to make that. And, you know, 18%, it's gotten, right, it was 10% in the old days, then it got 15, then 18, then 20. And I think that we're 25% tippers, you know, on the reg. Um, And even if something's going bad, I tend to give the server the benefit of the doubt because I've been in that situation. We know that when something goes wrong, there are so many reasons why that aren't necessarily the server. Kink in the hose, and you don't know where the why the water is stopping. The only time I will ever reduce the tip is if I somehow, which is not... Often, if I somehow know 100% for a fact that it's a server screw up. But even then, I know the tips also go to other people. So it's like then I'm taking away from the kitchen or the bar or something right, else. Right, but they're a representative of the restaurant. Right. And so, and, and obviously you can get a manager, you know, what I'm, I'm just saying there are other people you can talk to. It's not like you're, you know, it's just an, an automated McDonald's or whatever. But the thing is that's happening with what happened in COVID culture is that we were over tipping in a good way because we wanted people, We number one, we were thanking them for putting their health on the line in a global you know, pandemic and a crisis like this. And I totally get that. But I feel like outside the service industry, people just started attaching tips to everything. Mm-hmm. And I was at a grocery store the other day, and there was a 10, 15, 20, 25% on the grocery store cashier. And I took a cab the other day um, when I was on the road doing stand-up. Mm-hmm. When I got out of the cab... And I swipe my card, the tip, they give you three options, it started at 34%. That is preposterous. It was insane. I mean, they must literally then be not be paying them anything. You know, you would, so they must be completely relying on the tips, which even then, that's a really good, I mean, that's a good pay. But they're not. What are we doing doing this stuff? Right. It was an accredited cab company. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it wasn't just some guy that picked, you know, sometimes, you know, you you see a driver at the airport. It's like, I'll take you wherever you're going for 20 bucks or whatever. You know, then you'll, you reflects on the tip. Now this was a cab company. You were making. 34%. You you said a really great thing about this when we were talking about this the other day about, and I'm going to just give you the idea so that you can say it since it's your words about how this benefits only the the company the management yeah right? it doesn't so the idea that that when you tip people um you're not the servers don't get paid right so and it's and it's an hourly thing and it's gone up slightly but obviously with inflation they try to accommodate it's never right on and so 
there's a 20% thing that's being added to a lot of restaurants right now that we were talking about that that isn't even the tip. It's a service charge that Mm -hmm. gets added. And they say that a portion of that, right, goes to the server, but also to other people. And if you feel so inclined to give your server a tip, that that's on top of that. So if you have a hundred dollar bill and then there's already a twenty percent service charge, which I'm totally great with, that's a hundred and twenty bucks, a hundred percent. But then to say that money, just so you know, we, we put it on, we automatically put it on, and it doesn't go to your server. This, some of it will. Some well, of how it, much? Who knows? I don't know. So the craziest thing about that is, then if you feel so inclined to tip your server on that, you're essentially you're paying a third of the check. In just the tips, right? And how are you? Sub- and because you don't know, then then people who like us, who like we want to be conscientious, we don't want our server to get screwed over because of something ambiguous. We err on the side of, well, I guess I better give some extra, right? And so that only benefits the company because it means that the company is not paying the employees. Yeah. And I was, I they quote a- unquote are, but they're doing it from the service fee, dude. I used to work at a restaurant where we would pool tips. They illegally took 40% of our wages to pay the management staff. Unbelievable. Which is illegal. It was 45%. It was it wasn't unbelievable. It was fucking insane. Yeah. And then I straight remember straight up illegal, straight up dude, wrong. Dude, so I went so I was working a shift one night and I asked this guy and I go cuz I got the envelope and it was 120 bucks. And I went to the other guy who I knew was a big who got a big earnings and I said, "Hey man, I gave 450 bucks. I had got made that alone that night for me, you know, small mm-hmm. restaurant. He had made 400 bucks." And I said, well, there weren't that many servers on how the balls that we walk with with whatever, 120, whatever, 150 it was. And that's when we found out that they were literally taking our money to pay all of the staff, which, by the way, I'm saying and, and and it took them completely off the hook. And I just think that that idea is snowballing right now. Because we're obviously back to normal because I I had an idea for a New Yorker cartoon where it would be a guy at a bank who was talking to a bank teller. And at the end, when he was signing off on his credit card to make the deposit, there was a tip option at the bank. That's great. But it's like, you know, and it's, you know, I think it it just goes to show my one of my worst fears about about our species, which is that we really will only do the right thing if we're incentivized but in not being caught, you know what I'm saying? It's like people will only do the right thing um, when when people are looking. Oh, absolutely. Which I guess is like one of the great, maybe one of the benefits of organized religion. I thought you were going to say of ring cams. <laughs> no, organized religion. Yeah, of course. You well, plant, that's why. Plant that idea in people's heads, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. You're always being watched. That, bro, that's what ring cams are. Mm-hmm. They're Jesus for your home. <laughs> um. That's how they. Uh, that's how they try to sell it in the in you know. Yeah, the uh, ring is the halo over your head. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Kite for Seth Shapiro, Emmy, Ben, Paul in the booth. Uh, thank you so much for listening to us. This has been Kite Club Podcast. We'll see you next week.